Well, hey, hey, friendship co-partakers. Let's, let's schwamp, shall we? Oh, 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 man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I'm so glad you're here. Hi. Hi, friends. Hi, friendships. I gotta close my door here. Close my door. What, what up? How's everybody doing? You guys, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Uh, tell me the best thing that's happened to you recently. Before we get into all the nerdiness... I want to know, how are you doing? How's the week been? How's the week been? What's up, Joaquim? Go I don't know how to say your name, but I'm really glad you're here. Gonsalves? Is that how you say it? I always watch your tutorials. That's awesome. Thanks for watching. That's really cool. Hey, Kevin from County Down, Ireland. I don't, I assume that's in Ireland, but I don't know where that is. I bought a sofa, a very adult thing to do. Way too adult, Ron. Way too adult. Good job. Good job. Hey, from Poland. Hello from Barbados. Oh, dang. From Belgium. You guys could, could work. Good work. Oh, man. This is great. You guys, I, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Um, I am hoping to do a live stream every month or so just to uh, catch up, see how you guys are doing and answer a few questions. We are doing things a little different this time. Uh, we have a form. There is a link to the form down in the uh, in the description. Hi, I can talk. My name is Casey. <laughs> in the description down below. And I'm going to try to get to some of those today. Um, so I'm going to prioritize questions that are submitted through the form just because it's really easy to miss things in chat. And I feel like a chicken with his head cut off. So that would not be great. You saved me a ton of time switch from Vegas. That's so awesome. Glad, glad to help. I've done nothing, have done enough this past week to prove that I'm not dead. Good work, JD Floyd. Same. New year, good new year, except for my slip disc. Oh, no thank you. No thank you. That sucks. Thanks for doing, just found your recent videos recently. They're extremely helpful from Michigan here. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, uh-oh. I, I think there's a cute, I think there's a cute on the way. You guys want to see my, my cuteness? Come here. Dogs and cutes. That, this is my pride and joy. This is my little baby girl. Say hi. Hi. Say hi, internet. Hi. <laughs> this is Shelby. She's the cutest pickle around. Look at these curly cues. Look at that. It's crazy, huh? Yeah. It's crazy. Do you see yourself on the little on the camera? Yeah. Oh, you want to see it big? Ready? A bus. Look, there's a tiny bus. Look, careful. I think we almost ran over a tiny bus, man. <laughs> oh, there's this pickle. All right, there. the The chat says it's too cute. They can't take it. You want to take that bus? Yeah. Okay, you can take the bus. I love you. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Bye pickle. <laughs> so cute. Oh, it just doesn't stop. That's what my life is like. So I hope. I hope that. Ah, <sighs> sorry. Sorry about how. How great that is. <laughs> thank, thank you, Joaquim. I appreciate that blessing. That's cool. Cuteness overload. No, it's too cute. It's illegal. There's illegal cuteness there. We'll have to put on a... Uh, okay, no. It's too... I was going to do a broadcast colors joke. Uh, she's the new ground control president. You know, we might actually do better. <laughs> Having problem with media offline whenever I'm using effects on my video clip. I recently moved to DaVinci Resolve from C drive to D drive. Hmm. I'm not sure why that is specifically without poking around a lot. Um, but like I said, guys, we are going to be uh, taking some questions here from the form that is the first line down below in the description. So I'm going to answer everything that I can that seems reasonable that I have um, that I have resources to reasonably answer here within a few minutes. And that's kind of the plan. Um, so that's, that's the thing. So if you have a question, put it in that form and I will try hard to get to it. I'll answer them in the, uh, in the order they are brought in and I'll try and do like one from each person at least. Okay. And then maybe we can go back if we have time for multiple things. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to switch to my 
screen here and then i think i have a small look at that look look at this it's working it's working it's gonna be recorded and published yeah it'll be it'll be on youtube don't worry about it yep it will have a a replay opinions on using h264 versus h265 and proxy generator uh real quick i would probably use h264 just because you can the more things can play it it's a little bit easier um it's a little bit easier on your system too H.265 takes a little more resources, and it's only available in the paid version. So there's that. All right. So we're going to start with uh, some from the form here. And this question comes from uh, Lena or Lena. And it says this. Uh, hey, Casey, I have a list with a few VFX ideas that I'd never been done in Resolve. Here they are. HUD, playing with time, uh, cloning myself while walking around oneself. Walking through a mirror, bullet rain, stop like in the Matrix, liquid time freeze, parallax effect, text behind moving objects and camera, live newspaper like in Harry Potter, 3D flag, or any mesh animation. I've tried almost all of your tutorials, but there's so many more to make. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, those are great ideas. I will keep those in mind. Um, how long did it take you to say I'm a DaVinci Pro because it takes me a whole day just to learn one effect and function? I was actually thinking about this the other day. It's like, when does somebody become professional? What do you guys think? When, when do you become professional? When, when would you consider yourself a professional or an expert or a master at something, right? Uh, I was thinking about that. I'm like, I don't know if I'd call myself even an expert on things, but you know, I don't know. Um, I, I do remember having a point in my, in my life where I realized I was getting paid to do media stuff. And I was like, dang, I'm a media professional. That's crazy. You know, expert when it's no effort. I don't know about that. I think it's always going to be effort. I've been at Resolve for years now. And I still feel well behind on it. Yeah, same. Being efficient. Okay, efficient, maybe so. But what is efficient? What do you call that? Expert minimum one year. Interesting. I wonder why it's a time or hours. Guys, I've been nerding out so hard on how to learn things and like the science of learning because I want to make better uh, educational content. For you guys and uh so i've been pretty deep in that and i'm getting more and more convinced that that 10 000 hours thing not actually a thing i don't think that i mean certainly somebody who spent 10 000 hours on something would be an expert but i don't think that would be the only way to get expertise in something right you're a pro when you still continue to learn see there you go there you go there you go so you're asking how to get better quality videos in DaVinci. That's such a wide question. Like, how am I supposed to answer that? I don't know. Like, shoot really good video and spend time editing it and do a good job? I don't know. Best way to learn, applied practice. That, I believe, is a very, very big factor. Yeah, applied, applied practice. Yep. There's all kinds of things. We can nerd out on that if you want to. How do you select all the same color clips on a timeline? For example, the green clips on your timeline. Um, there are ways to like filter it, um, which we can get into, uh, ask your questions on the, um, on the form. Okay, guys. Sorry. I'm like reading this as we go, been at my job for 10 years at Apple and still struggle far from the pro support rep. Sure. Yeah. Not necessarily. I put more than 10,000 hours into theoretical physics and I'm not an expert. Okay. So maybe that. I don't know. I don't know. And then it's like, compared to who, right? Been studying Resolve since version 9. The target keeps changing and moving, so the learning never stops. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Okay. Um, Luke Brown says, what is the easiest way to import an FBX from Blender to Fusion with textures? So you can, in Fusion, you can go up to Fusion here. Let's see if I have my zoom and everything working. I don't know if I do. Nope. I don't. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Gotta get my zoom working and my highlight thingy working. There we go. Okay. Um, up here in the Fusion uh, menu, under Import, you can import an FBX scene. And it's kind of dependent on how you bundle the scene in Blender or whatever. Um, but that's how you would do it. Import FBX scene. And then you can pick an FBX and you can select things that you want to import with it. 
That's kind of a bigger thing than we can probably go into right now, but that should start you down that path a little bit, uh, Luke. Uh, Gordon Keenan says, what's the easiest way to understand what link to use in Fusion, i.e. blue, green, etc." All right, I gotta have this. My like form is being a jerk, hold on. Do, 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 wrapping, wrap. Why doesn't it just do that for everything? Okay, what link to use in Fusion, i.e. blue, green? To me, it gets confusing really quickly. Okay, so in Fusion, here's the thing. Uh, it's really overwhelming, especially when you have something like, um, okay, like a 3D merge node uh, or just a regular merge node. Um, there's all these different colors of links here, right? All these different arrows. And the thing is, the, the reason it's confusing is because they change all the time. Um, but generally for a lot of the nodes, the main input, like the main image you're going to be affecting goes in the yellow node or in the yellow uh, connection here. So for a merge, the background goes in the yellow and the foreground goes in the green. Um, same thing for like a tracker node or um, anything that has a background and a foreground, um, a map control, a background is the yellow foreground is the green. If you forget any of them, you can always mouse over them and you see it shows you what they are. Blues are always masks. And then the, sometimes there's green or gray or whatever, um, like a map control has a bunch, right? So there's white and there's gray. And you kind of, the more that you use a certain node, the more you get used to the colors. But one thing that you can do is if you are gonna grab this and drag it onto one of these nodes, you can hold control uh, is it control? Maybe alt? Yeah, you can hold alt. I think it's control on Mac. And it will bring up a little uh, thingy here and it will say, okay, what do you want to connect this to? So that's pretty helpful. You can also right click and drag and let go and it'll do the same thing. So that's a great way to know what you're connecting it to. So I hope that's helpful. Hey, Maple Seed. Love you, how you doing? Guys, Maple Seed is a great friend of mine. She is wonderful. Show some love in the chat for her. Um, please say hi to Dan. Hi, Dan. Oh, that's awesome. How can I export a PNG without the black background? Uh, guys, put your questions in the in the form down below. I'll try and get to as many as I can. Three dots on the fusion nodes. Does that mean that you have three preview screens? Yes. Um, I have an external monitor. Um, you can also go up to workspace here. And if you go to video clean, free, video clean feed and select another monitor, that'll actually give you four dots if you also have an external monitor. So it gets kind of confusing, but mainly you just have the one or two, right? Okay. I should make a new intro live. Oh yeah, <laughs> maybe. We shall see, we shall see. All right, let's see, let's see what's next. Uh, Mario asks, can the speed editor change variables like zoom and other transition items, primarily the jog wheel? Um, you, There are ways to like hold a button and you can select different things, but I don't think you can select anything. There's like, you can, you can do like the duration of the transition. You can do, um, you can like, so the, and they're like updating it every time, but I don't think you can like map it to zoom or anything like that. I don't think so. Marilyn says, can you place a video behind a video and both play at the same time? Do you mean like in the, I mean, cause you can put a video on top of a video here, like in the tracks, right? So we can have two pieces of video and we can like move one and they'll play at the same time. Yeah, you can do it that way. Um, I'm trying to think of what else you could mean by that. Feel free to um, ask clarifying questions in the chat, guys. The The chat is on slow mode just so I don't go insane, but you should be able to like answer a question every now and then. Um, so yeah, Marilyn, is that what you mean or do you mean something else? I recently exported a video and it was only three quarters because I foolishly did not have the render range full time. Do you have a checklist or a workflow sequence that you apply to everything? Um, I guess I have a mental one. I don't have like a, a written out one. That would be smart though. 
Um, okay, this is a quick one. What's your best advice for getting to know DaVinci better? Watch a six hour tutorial, binge short tutorials, learn about stuff when you need it. I actually have a video on this, uh, on how to learn DaVinci in one hour a day. And um, that's based on some scientific learning stuff I've uh, been researching. And I would recommend that. I would recommend what's in that video. Okay, Richard says, I get massive sound distortion when using the Fairlight tab. The video, however, is fine in other tabs. Do I have settings issue perhaps? Um, the only thing I could think of is that you have like your monitoring set weird in Fairlight, which I don't actually know a lot about, but you might have some kind of something set wrong there. It's probably worth looking at if you have um, like your output, let's see, I'm trying to think where it is. Be in Fairlight, it would be monitoring. There's like a way to adjust what your output settings are. I, I'm not familiar enough with Fairlight at the moment to show you exactly where those is, where those are, but I'd recommend looking into that. Yeah. Marilyn says, uh, to clarify, I have a video of a monkey looking around. I need to hide this monkey behind one of the host, but make him look like he's part of the video. You mean like put, like cut out the monkey and put him in a video? Like, like put him in, like you would Photoshop something in, but video style? Is that what you mean? This prog program's also available for, for Mac. Yes, that's right. Yep. Setting up DaVinci for multiple monitors. Uh, one thing I'd recommend is here in Up and Workspace, there's dual screen mode. You can turn that on. And then there's layout presets for dual screen mode, uh, which have a few different um, presets depending on if you have two screens or three screens or whatever. It will It will help you with that, but that's kind of the closest it gets. You don't like move panels around like you would in other apps. So. Okay, Marilyn Dixon. So long story short, that kind of thing is pretty involved um, because you would have to do something like um, grab, you, you'd have to have that on a green screen or something like that, or you'd have to trace it out every frame uh, and that would probably be a fusion job unless you have it already cut out and the the monkey doesn't have a background then you can just place it over over it in the edit page I guess but it's kind of a involved thing I do have a couple of green screen tutorials up that I would recommend checking out for that I'm a tea freak. Uh, I'm actually drinking coffee. I drink decaf coffee a little, uh, if you didn't know. I am I am plenty hyper as it is. <laughs> magic Mask. Yeah, Magic Mask could work. Yeah, if you have the paid version, Magic Mask is great. So you could possibly do that. It's not going to look super realistic unless you really plan it and you do a really good job from beginning to end. If you want it to look really meme -y, that could work. Yeah. Um, Hi Rose says, uh, how do you organize your files and what's a good naming convention? I do gaming videos and just name my projects like Overwatch 001. And I do the same thing for other videos. I also feel like I lose track of where I save my assets. So a designated place to put my assets would be good. Yeah, I'll show you kind of what I do. Um, it's sort of changed over the years. Let me see if I can find, um, of course I'm probably going to like, Okay, so like for, see if I can give you large icons here. So here's here's our project folders for uh, Space Pizza, or, or what we called, um, we called it Space Pizza in production, but it's called uh, <laughs> Hot and Ready. Um, so we have just a, we, we don't keep it super crazy. We just have a folder for like Blender, we have a folder for behind the scenes, we have a folder for production, and all the production stuff is sorted by the shoot day. So it kind of has a naming convention where we have like SP for space pizza and then the year, month, day, and then A, B, or C, depending on what shoot we had. If we have multiples in a day, first shoot would be A, second would be B, and so on. Um, and then those are just kind of dumped in that folder. Um, 
with the card structure and everything that we have so that we know what card is what. And then they're not renamed after that. We also have our audio, but basically we try and tag everything with a serial number kind of like this so that it's unique. And we, aren't, we don't have, you know, MOV001 and like 50 different uh, clips that are called that on our system so that if we do need to do a major search for something, it's unique, right? That's kind of the idea. And the camera files that we use are named unique things. If you do have something like a DSLR that names it MOV001 or something, I would rename those because it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. Um, and I would rename it with something that has like a serial number or a date or something on it. That's probably a good way to go. Could I go over some basic fusion tips? Uh, put that, guys, put your questions in the, uh, in the form, which is linked down below. And I'm gonna try and get to as many questions as I can today, okay? I've been struggling recently matching CG to live footage, especially the colors. Do you have any tips and tricks? Uh, yeah, so that's still something I'm learning too. Um, but one thing that you want to do is uh, if you have some CG, I wish I had something up right now, but if you had some CG, you, one big thing is matching the black levels. Um, let me see if I can do something here quick because I want to show you, I want to actually show something, not just explain it. Um, Let me uh, Okay. So if I had a shot like this, let's say, we'll just put throw this into fusion here. And I had some kind of uh, if I wanted to put a UFO up here or something, one of the big things uh, would be color managing which we can get into if you guys want to talk about color management stuff. Um, but basically, if you have something that is uh, that has like pure black and pure white in it, chances are what you've shot doesn't have pure black and pure white in it. And so you'd have to lift up that black to be dark gray to match the black levels in the footage. And then you'd bring down the whites to match the white levels in the footage. And you make sure that those two are right. And that's a pretty good like that'll get you in a pretty good direction. I have a little bit of a um, guide on that on my recent uh, green screen video. So the like how to do advanced green screen, I would recommend looking at that because that's essentially going to be the same thing. Um, there's also a little bit about that in the VFX video from ResolveCon. So something like that. I struggle with the disconnect between camera metadata, OS metadata, and accessing it in Resolve. Yeah, I think that's kind of a, a common thing for sure. Yeah. Any tutorial about expression and fusion or transition and titles? Oh yeah, that would be great. Um, post things in the uh, in the forum, guys. Something as simple as camera exposure date and time control cannot be accessed within Resolve. I rely on file names alone. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it's kind of weird how little you can access sometimes. And like, I would think with Resolve being a metadata hound, there would be an easier way to do that. But I think a lot of people use a, a separate utility to kind of log that and you can log it in Resolve. So, I mean, if you do your job logging it in Resolve, it's, it's really nice. Do you have to pay for each version of Resolve? No, it's free upgrades, free upgrades. Okay. How much time can I spend learning DaVinci, assuming I spend one hour per day? I have an exact video on that, Ahmed. An exact video on that. It's how to learn DaVinci Resolve in only one hour a day. You can search it on my channel. Um, short answer is yes, you can do it. And um, there's a certain way to go about it to kind of maximize how much you learn. Lori says, can you show how to use Div different DaVinci or different Resolve 18 editing tools with examples. I struggle to know which one does what. Do you mean like um, editing in the timeline, I imagine? Um, you mean like slip, slide, uh, trim, ripple, that kind of stuff? Lori, let me know in the chat. What's up, Kevin Stratford? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. 
Guys, if you want to learn basically anything else on the computer, go and follow Kevin Stratvert. Subscribe to him. He does like a lot of stuff on like Microsoft apps and like all basically anything that can that runs on a computer. He has some really really nice tutorials on. Guys, guys, amazing. Um. Okay, Lori says yes. Okay, so here's kind of how that works. So if you have a clip in the timeline, there's a few ways that you can adjust it. I'll kind of move over so we have a different, different. Uh, maybe I'll just color this different. Okay. Let's color this blue just so we can see this a little easier. Close our media pool. So if I want to change the in and out of this clip, uh, I can mouse over it. And when my mouse turns to a uh, bracket like this, I can trim this, right? This is just with my normal selection mode, okay? So that, that I can trim and it'll leave a space here. I can select the space and get rid of it like that with backspace. I can also do this on the end like that. So that's great. Um, I can also grab the middle of this and move it around. And that's what you do most of the time, right? Um, honestly, the only other tool I ever use is this second tool right here, which is trim edit mode. What that does is it's similar to the normal edit, but when we grab our bracket here, it will not only just trim this this way, but it will move everything down so that we don't have a gap there. And so that's really handy if you're just trying to kind of trim a bunch of uh, clips and you just want to make some of them shorter, you know, that's really nice. You can also mouse over the middle of this and you can slip this back and forth. So you can adjust, uh, you can grab a different part of the video. Basically you're keeping the in point and the out point in the timeline, but you're just grabbing a different chunk of the source video. Um, well, let's see if you go over the bottom of it, like right here on the, um, on the title, you can move this back and forth like this, and it will roll the other, um, the other in points and out points around it. So you don't have a gap, but you can just move this earlier in your, in your edit. So those are really the only big things I use. Um, I don't ever use these two. Uh, this one has a way of like, you can play through the clip and kind of dynamically trim it like that. I find that to be kind of annoying, so I don't really use it. And then the blade tool, is really great if you're just learning to edit because you can just, you know, decide exactly where you want to cut and clip it like that. But what I usually do is I use the playhead like this and I find the place where I want. And then I'll use a keyboard shortcut like control shift uh, backslash to cut it, which I've remapped to S on the keyboard. But you can cut it like that. And I just use it like this with the uh, playhead because I feel like that's a little bit easier to use. The playhead is kind of like your knife and you aim it and then you chop it with a keyboard shortcut. That's what I like. So there's a little, there's a little bit, hopefully that's helpful. All right. We're working through, uh, questions on our form here, which man, I have 73 questions. You guys, Can you believe this? It's crazy. You guys are amazing. Is there a way for Resolve to generate a subtitle? Uh, not automatically. I'm sure they're working on that, but they, they do have some really cool subtitle support. You can make subtitles and export them, import them and stuff, um, but they don't like automatically make from your, your dialogue, unfortunately, at this point. I'm sure they're doing that. All right. You're welcome, Lori. Okay, Mario says, sometimes when I create a timer, text plus, and then merge over the composite clip, the timer does not show the resulting clip. Any idea what that could be? Um, so you're talking about like you make a fusion composition and you put it over a clip and sometimes you don't see the clip below. One reason is you could just have, it could be on a black background in fusion that you haven't turned off, like you haven't uh, made transparent. The other one is it could just be tweaking out and you might have to go like into fusion and then back and then it will show you the clip under it. Sometimes there's an error where it just kind of doesn't show the clip under it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rob says, uh, is there a best way to install DaVinci Resolve on a computer with multiple drives? For example, which drive should the program be installed? Which drive should cache be installed? Um, I, w I just install 
resolve on the C drive. Um, I haven't had much problem with that. And then um, it's, I, I have before had just a separate cache drive, like an SSD. And I think that's helpful. I don't right now for some reason, I forgot why. Um, I probably just didn't have an extra SSD laying around when I built this computer, but um, I think that's a good way to do it is just have a dedicated cache drive. I think that's a really good idea. Um, but a lot of the things we use is off of a shared drive, like off a, a NAS. So yeah, and I think we have our cache on the NAS, which is not a good idea, but here we, here we are. <laughs> uh, Christopher says, uh, why DaVinci over Final Cut Pro or Premiere? And why does DaVinci seem so overwhelming from a Final Cut point of view? I think the reason why I like DaVinci more than the other ones is because it does everything that those do for the most part, other than some little gimmicky things. Um, and it does way more, right? So Resolve has an editor. So this is basically Final Cut or Premiere, right? This editing page. The reason why I feel like it's amazing and why it seems overwhelming is because it's several programs in one. You can think of like the Adobe suite of, you know, like Premiere, After Effects, Audition, um, Media Encoder, all that stuff that you kind of use for Adobe um, or like Apple and Motion and Compressor and whatever they use now. Um, those are, it's all built into one app. And so you can easily just like, if you want to jump into a project and do some effects work, you can just switch to Fusion right here from the timeline and you're in a fully featured, um, very, very powerful compositing app. Then you can switch back to the edit page and it's right there in the timeline. If you want to do color, we have like the world's most advanced color grading app right here built inside of Resolve. If you want to do audio mixing, switch over to Fairlight. And this is like Pro Tools or um, Adobe Audition or uh, what's the Apple one, all mixed together. It's it's all inside of Resolve. It's pretty amazing. And yeah, and Resolve is free. <laughs> and it has an amazing free version. Uh, it also has a paid version. It's $300 and you get free up upgrades. You buy it once. I mean, it's just, it's like a no brainer to me. To me, it's a no brainer. Okay. Can you show an example of multiple computer workflow example? I want to take work home from my main job and work at home with Premiere. I have direct access to the project resolve. It's managed. Uh, you can export a, a project though. I'll just take this one cause it's really quick. Um, if you have a project, um, you can export it just by going up here and say export project. And you can save that to an external drive. It's really not a big deal. It's just a little different is all. It's not like you have a project file on your system. You have to export it, but you export a project file and then you can import it at home. You can also save it on the cloud. Cloud is super sweet, you guys. Blackmagic Cloud, we use that all the time. Um, Eric Strand said, is there a better way to capture stills than grabbing and exporting stills from the color page? Not that I know of, that's how I do it. Kenneth says uh, to convert Video code from H.265, H.264 using Handbrake. It's awesome. Um, sweet. So, uh, I'm not sure how to say your name. Sorry. Um, Swar Swarendu? Bera? I'm having a problem of media offline whenever I'm using any effects on my video clip. I recently moved from DaVinci C drive to D drive. Please help. This is frustrating. I understand that. Um, wondering why that could be I don't know why that could be you would probably have to ask on the black magic forums because I'm not really sure how that would affect it I've never put resolve on my D drive I don't see a major reason to do that um, I, I find when you do stuff like that there's problems generally uh, and I haven't seen a major performance boost from doing something like that um, Jordan says, how would you go about making a number count up animation from one to 10,000? I'm trying to make a count up animation that shows the numbers rapidly counting up until the 10,000 mark in under like three to five seconds. Additionally, I would love to go about saving the effect if I can reuse the asset. I have a, I have a tutorial on that on it's a countdown, but it works the same way. Um, so I would recommend looking at that because it's, it would basically be the same thing. Tony says, can you force Fairlight to cache an audio effect like you can with OFX in the color tab? Uh, you can bounce it. You could bounce it to a new to a new track. So if you have your if you have your audio here, 
you can right click and there's a way to do this. I'm trying to think of how you do it. It's like a render in place kind of thing. There's a way to do that, but I forgot how to do it. <laughs> but you can do that. Um, so I would recommend looking that up, like a bounce in place kind of thing. I think that's what it's called. It might be what it's called in Pro Tools. <laughs> I don't know. Guys, I am uh, I am going to be studying Fairlight some more, but I'm still not really, really familiar with Fairlight. I know enough to get stuff done, but um, I would have to talk with Sam, who is like a Fairlight genius these days. Hey, Jamie, good to see you, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We should hang out soon. Just saying. We haven't hung out yet, and that's weird. It's weird. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. Um, what would an average smartphone color space transform look like? Uh, generally, a smartphone isn't going to shoot in a log format. It's just going to be um, Rec. 709, so you don't really need a color space transform. That's the short answer there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unless you're shooting with something like Filmic Pro or something, in which case I'd use a LUT that they provide. Um, if there is an app that shoots some kind of log thing, uh, I would look for a LUT made by those people to basically use in, in place of your color space transform, Luke. Uh, JD Floyd asks, could you do a video on preparing time-lapse videos? I'm brand new to video production. And after watching a lot of YouTube videos, DaVinci seems the best for what I want to do. Um, yeah, so there are a few kind of tweaks with, with a time lapse. It kind of depends on how you shoot it. If you shoot like a bunch of stills with a DSLR, sometimes there's flicker, which there are ways to kind of fix that in Resolve. But generally, um, if you're just wanting all the images to be one after another, you can import them in the media page. Um, so you navigate to them here. And then if you have an image sequence, there's these three dots and you can select frame display mode to be sequence. And then you can just drag this in as footage and it'll come in like video footage basically. And then you can do something like right click and go to clip attributes and you can change the frame rate and all of that stuff there. So that's how I would do that. Add the flicker to the clip that, that might help. Um, it kind of depends on the, type of flicker and if it's like shot with raw and if there's auto exposure on there's like a bunch of things when you want a really nice smooth time lapse that you kind of have to walk through um so i would just go step by step and when you run into a problem google that problem and keep going you know do i need to switch to from resolve 17 to 18 it's perfectly fine for my needs now any new main differences i would always keep it updated if it runs on your computer because they fix bugs and there's new features and stuff um and uh, a lot of speed improvements, like 18 runs noticeably faster on my opinion, or on my um, on my system, yeah. A lot of phones using HDR color spaces though, so a CST would be needed to match the display. Possibly, I need, I need to get my hands on some HDR video, um, and I don't even know if they're shooting in the color space or if they're doing that and then it's like, because from what I understand, some of them shoot like HDR, but then they basically comp they do the transform before they record the video. And so it's just to get a wider range, but it's not actually an HDR color space. I could be wrong on that. I think some video, some, uh, some phones do that. I don't know. I'll need to look into that some more. Okay. Joaquim says, a text plus node I created was malfunctioning and now it's stuck on the fusion clip even after deleting the node. Oh, dang. Not sure what I did wrong. Um, well, I would restart for sure. Um, I would also go and clear your cache. So go up to um, playback and say delete render cache all because that sounds like a cache thing to me. Okay. Okay. Planning to get your iPad course. Any idea why the iPad version went with the cut page instead of the edit page? Uh, it's the cut page makes a lot of sense to happen in the um, on the iPad, just because there's less to mess with. Um, there's less buttons and less things, so I'm I would assume that's probably why. 
Um, I would also assume that the audience that is going to cut things with an iPad is pretty likely going to be more, uh, more likely to shoot things that would be good to edit with the cut page. Uh, things like vlogs and short videos, YouTube videos, content creator stuff, right? Um, and I wouldn't think you would choose an iPad as your first your first tool to edit a feature film, which would be much better to edit in the edit page. Does that make sense? I think that's the thing. After clearing cache, make sure to rebuild the fusion cache. Otherwise you get nothing. Yep. All right, is AI gonna take over video editing jobs? Probably some of them. It, it might help, but I don't think it's gonna take over everything. Hey Sven, thank you for saying hello. How do you choose a thumbnail to my edited clip as I choose a random thumbnail after I render? Oh, how does it choose a, a thumbnail? I'm not sure exactly how it does that. New to resolve, is there a way to add a transition to many images at the same time in a timeline? Uh, can you answer you, ask your questions down below, guys? That would be great. Um, yeah, because there's a lot, a lot of people in line, actually. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't be reading stuff from the chat, but I can't help it sometimes. Um, uh, real quick, beer, Bill Perry, that CST goes at the end pretty much all the time. Pretty much. Can we see the video you're editing? It's not really much to look at. It's it's just a bunch of sample shoot shots that I can um, demonstrate things on. Okay. Uh, oh, how to get better qualities as in HD or 4K. Oh, you mean like better video quality, like the um, like the resolution and stuff? Well, I mean, you have to shoot with a nice camera. That would be one thing. Um, the The other thing to make sure of is that your timeline resolution, if you have like 4K, make sure your timeline resolution is set to 4K because you can put in like 8K footage into a 1080 timeline and guess what? It's going to scale it down, right? So we want to make sure that our timeline resolution, if we have 4K footage, is, you know, Ultra HD or something like that. It's whatever, whatever you want to deliver in at the highest quality, right? So that would be the highest quality way to do that if you have Ultra HD footage. I would do that, throw them in the timeline. What this is going to do is take this 1080 footage and scale it up. And you can control the scale and stuff. It's, I, I feel like it's a negligible difference most of the time. Um, and then when you render, when you go to deliver page, make sure especially, I mean, the best thing to do would be like, um, a quick time like DNxHR, something like that. If you're gonna keep that, um, you can also do like H.265 uh, and make sure that this quality restriction is like about about 20 times or about 2,000 times the frame rate ish. That's what I've found with a bunch of tests and stuff. Um, that's like the best bang for your buck when it comes to space versus. Um, quality okay so there's a little bit on that harry says uh, how do you select all the same color clips on a timeline for example the green clips in your timeline i'm a wedding videographer so i would have all the ceremony clips one color bride prep yeah so um a way to do that would be to it, it kind of depends on i think you can let's see i think there might be a way yeah so here in the timeline right here you can say Select clips with clip color right here. This is under the timeline menu. So you can select clips by various things here. So I didn't even know that. That's crazy. So now it's just selecting clips that are green, which is cool. So you can do it that way. You can also do this in the color page. If you go to color, you can go up here to where it says clips and there's a scroll down here. And so you can, you can kind of um, filter this by clip color. So these are just the orange clips and it'll just show the orange clips here, and then I can kind of match those together, and then I can switch back to all clips, and that'll show all the clips. There's a couple ways to do that. Hey, you're welcome, Gaurav. I don't know how to say your name, but I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Okay. Do you believe 
DaVinci Resolve will be as powerful as After Effects in the future. In some ways, I think it's a lot more powerful. I really do. I really think that, especially for visual effects. Um, for graphics, I know a lot of people prefer After Effects. A lot of the reason, I feel like a lot of the reason is, be, is one, it can import Illustrator files easily um, and Photoshop files easily. Although you can also do that in um, Fusion. And then the other thing is there's just a ton of templates and presets and um, plugins and stuff that are available for After Effects because that's been kind of the mainstay for years and years and years and years and years and years, and years, and years right? Um, but if you were to just do like vanilla After Effects and vanilla um, Fusion for VFX, I think Fusion is the clear winner. Yeah. The only thing I probably say on that is Element 3D is pretty dope and it doesn't work with Fusion. So there's that. How do you do a zoom in that close to your clip so I can see every little detail? Uh, do you mean like this? This is a utility that I use for Windows. It's called Glass Brick. And you can kind of animate your cursor and stuff. Okie dokie. Um, still working through the, uh, the questions in our forum, which you can submit questions down below. This is, uh, this is nice guys. I'm, I'm, thank you for hanging with me. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. Imagine if Blackmagic makes their own version of Element 3D. That'd be really cool. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that was in, in the, in the pipe. I know nothing about any of that, but I would say it would be, it would be a really good move to make some massive 3D support because that things are just going to get more and more like, you know, some kind of 3D renderer or um, easy global illumination kind of thing inside of Fusion that runs fast. Oh man, you just destroy the internet. All right. Let me format my stuff here. Doing time lapses with the Sony A7R 4 so I want to import a thousand plus number of images to make a time lapse video using DaVinci for the best color. Yeah, I think yeah, resolves a good good plan for that. Andrea says, how do you change the default settings for all projects? It asked me for them when I installed DaVinci, and now new projects open with those settings, and I chose the wrong resolution by mistake back then. Now, do I have to change it every time? Ooh, that sucks. Um, I don't know if I've ever done that, actually. I bet there's probably I bet there's probably a way to do it that I won't be able to find just derping through it right now. Um, but I would assume there's some kind of user settings. There's probably a way to do that. I would I would Google that. I'm not sure. If somebody knows, feel free to say in the chat. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a pain. That sucks. The other thing you can do also is make a sample project and then um, like open that every time. Or um, there's a there's a little trick that Mr. Alex Tech came up with, which is making a timeline, exporting a timeline, and then you double click the timeline on your um, like you you keep the exported timeline on your desktop, double click it, and then it will open up with a new project with those timeline settings so smart so smart okay all right stucco says uh how can i export a png without the black background i mean in a certain position for example i want to export a logo in the high area of the screen with, for all my videos sure um you mean like export to use on the web or something um you can do that. You can export with alpha. If first you'd have to make it with a, um, with a transparency channel in fusion or in your edit page somehow. But once you have something that's clear, you can go to the deliver page and you should be able to make like a, do, 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 like a TIFF sequence or something. I don't know if you can do a PNG. I don't think you can just do a PNG from Resolve at the moment, um, but you can do that and export with an alpha. So that's that's a way to do it. 
A saber infusion? Yeah, saber infusion would probably do it. Yeah, you could. You might be able to do that. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, I haven't. Um, I haven't done a lot of work with savers infusion, but they're pretty sweet. You, I think you might only be able to export at Open EXR though. I could be wrong on that. Either way. Right click into color tab. You can export PNGs in the color tab, but I d in the color page, but I don't think you can include an alpha. Maybe you can. Save as all files. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there you go. Saber node infusion might be the way. I've done it so many times with okay, but with alpha though. Okay, Oliver says, how do I get the color to the pen? In node crocodile worm. Dude, I haven't used that node. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. How do you change position value from zero to one of a rectangle stroke to a real domain of definition coordinate and make length to go clockwise while drawing the rect border? I don't know. Elaine, I would ask uh, I would ask Patrick Sterling that question because that that is more more nerdiness than I have done when it comes to graphic stuff, but he would know the he would know exactly how to handle that. <laughs> Sure, guys, just a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up.
Alrighty. Okie dokie. Sorry about that, everybody. Sorry about that. My wife needed me for talking to somebody on the health insurance market place. And I had to give them authorization. All this stuff. Oh boy, it's my favorite thing to do in the whole world. <laughs> so as you can assume, that was great. I'd much rather be doing that. Said no one. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Okay. So yeah, guys, go ahead and post your questions down in the forum below. I'm going to try and get to uh, as many as I can during this stream, but there are a lot of them. So um, thank you guys so much for all your awesome questions. This is so cool. Uh, Kyle asks, what courses should I be studying in school slash later education if I want to pursue a career in film? Um, well, I'll tell you this. I went to a uh, community college and got a pretty solid understanding of kind of the production process and kind of media uh, production in general. And I thought that was a really great way to start. Uh, it wasn't too expensive. So um, if you do want to go to someplace um, and, and get some formal education, I think that's a good idea. Uh, however, things are changing a lot. And I definitely have, I mean, I haven't worked in Hollywood or anything like that, but I know that uh, almost every experience I've had professionally, people are not that worried about whether you have a degree. They're worried about whether you can work well with people and whether you know your stuff. And, you know, I think a lot of uh, practice and learning and everything can come from doing your own projects, doing group projects. Um, which is something that I really liked with school is doing group projects. Uh, gets you a lot of experience and figuring out what you like and what you don't like. So something like that would be good, but you know, um, I wouldn't say you'd necessarily need college for, for this kind of stuff. I would, I would not be, I would not bat an eye if you were like, dude, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take some time and I'm gonna spend a year just internet videoing and making some stuff uh, for myself, you'd probably learn a ton. What would be really, really amazing is going to an internship. Internships are amazing, amazing, because they can teach you industry stuff and um, and not just what the schools want you to teach, okay? Yeah, so that that's my thought on that. You guys might disagree, I don't know, but definitely don't think that it is a um, 100% necessary thing these days. Okay. I actually talked a little bit about that with, uh, Sherwin on the last podcast. Um, the dream, Cr dream crusher podcast. If you guys don't know, I have a, I have a podcast where I talk to people who are creative and do creative stuff all the time. And, um, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. There's a new episode coming out tomorrow where we talk with our friend, uh, Fuzzerino, who is a YouTuber, and it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. So if you guys want to check that out, that'd be sweet. That should be on all the major podcast platforms. Hope you have a good time with that. Okay. Take on free video editing work with charities with a deadline. You'll learn real quick. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Great idea. Yep. Okay. Um, is it possible to clear or remove text on the sky in a moving frame? In a moving frame. Clear removes text or sky on a moving frame. If you mean like somebody already put text on a sky, you would have to track it and clone it out, which I do have a pretty recent video on that actually. Aaron says, I'm new with DaVinci, so if this is too basic, you don't need to answer it. However, I was wondering if there's a way to make text in the edit cut page and then take it into the color page and track the text to something uh, in one of the video clips. Hopefully I asked that well. You can do that. It's just easy. It's easier just to make the text in the, um, in the fusion page though. So, um, yeah, cause tracking the text in the color page, you can do that. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's kind of more, I don't know. It, it's, it's maybe not the best idea to do that, but in the fusion page, that's exactly what it's made for. So if you know anything about fusion, I would recommend looking into fusion. If you want to do stuff like that, that's, that's a fusion thing. Okay, tracking text to things. Even though color has a great tracker, it's very similar in Fusion and it's actually made to do that. Does that make sense? All right. 
Um, is it possible? Okay. Laz says, uh, is there any way to create transform related presets in DaVinci? I want to swap from Premiere, but the fact that I can't really create certain type of presets is a pretty big deal. Oh yeah, you can do stuff like that. Um, one thing you can do, let's see, I'm trying to think. I, I actually don't make a lot of presets, so it's kind of, that, that's going to be me kind of chirping through this, but I bet there's a really, really easy way to do that, which somebody can just tell you how to do. Um, but I mean, one thing that you can do is you can just like zoom this up like this and you can copy it and then like paste the attributes like uh, Alt V and say like zoom and then that will take that zoom into everything else, right? So that's an easy way to do that. I think there's a way to do it, but I'm, and you can also, I mean, you can make a fusion preset too, but there's, I think there's other ways to make presets that are a lot less miserable. So Magnus, why is the sound music crazy when you're playing the video in color mode? Um, it shouldn't be. That's really weird. I'm not sure why that would be. You might want to ask on the black magic forum. Dennis Lovelady says, on iPad, I had a simple project, one video, put the video over itself so I could do a before and after wipe. Color page only showed one clip, not two. Is there a setting? Um, okay, so you mean you did this basically, right? You put a clip over another clip like this and you went into color. Um, it, is it showing the two clips? Because it should show two clips. It should show each track what's probably happening if it does show two clips down here but you only see one you can click this little icon here which is called unmix and what that'll do is it will just use whatever clip you're selected without it'll just show whatever clip you have selected without the clips above it and so it doesn't mix them together right so this when i have this off we don't see the subtitle here right so that's a good way if you have things stacked, you can color grade stuff that's on lower layers without having to move them around. Okay. Showed only one, I'll try and unmix. Yeah, that's probably the way to go. Chris said, do you use Fusion standalone as it needed? When uh, I have looked into this quite a bit on whether to use Fusion standalone and I cannot find for the life of me a great reason to use Fusion standalone versus the Resolve Fusion. Um, other than it starts a little faster, there's a few, I think there's a few more things you can do with like some of the really nerdy coding stuff, but I'm pretty sure that's about it. I think the performance gain is not that different. And there's actually a lot of things that you can do in the fusion resolve, the resolve fusion that you can't do in the regular fusion. And so I'm like, uh, eh, I think I just stay with resolve. You know, one thing that I have been doing is making like a separate project. If I have a bunch of fusion stuff to do i'll make a separate project that isn't that doesn't have all my edits and everything in it and i kind of use it as its own standalone thing um but i'm still using the resolve fusion i hope that makes sense how to make transition titles not depending on clip resolution uh they automatically don't depend on clip resolution it's it's all relative it's like um percentage like across the frame and everything so they they aren't going to they aren't going to um, listen to the resolution anyway by default. Steve says, uh, what do you think the biggest reason to upgrade to the paid version? Magic Mask seems like a big deal, but what are some other paid features you would say make worth it? Uh, big deal for a lot of people is the noise reduction. So um, Resolve's noise reduction is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, it also takes more advantage of your GPU and stuff. So if you have like two GPUs, stuff like that. Um, and there's a few more um, there's a few more plugins and stuff like there's, uh, there's some really nice fusion fusion effects like the camera blur or the, the lens blur is only available in the, uh, in the paid version. There's like a bunch of fancier stuff is only available in the paid version, but it's honestly not a whole lot. Um, a lot of people either get it for the noise reduction or for the performance improvement. Yeah. Um, Richard says you can use magic mask for color grading, etc. but can you use it for stabilization? If so, how, uh, you wouldn't 
really use it for stabilization, I wouldn't think. Um, you would probably just do that by tracking a window. Probably. Um, yeah. Mario says, regarding the speed editor question from before, the idea was just to click on something with the mouse that allows changes and then use the jog wheel instead of moving the mouse horizontally. No, you can't do that. That'd be great, though. I would love that. Can you combine Blender objects with your DaVinci... Do you combine Blender objects with your DaVinci Resolve videos much? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, I have been getting into that, and it works great. Um, you can export an EXR from Blender, and you can bring it into Fusion. Um, I'll show you a little bit of that. So let's make like a new, let's make like a new fusion composition here. Um, so this is an EXR from Blender, which uh, I can bring in. And actually it's nice to use a loader instead of a media in here. Oh, I'm gonna mess something up here. Do, 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 do. Why is it being that way? Oh, it's cause I don't actually have it loaded. Ooh, it doesn't like that. Oh, it's because I don't have the layer selected. Huh? So there's all these different layers that you can grab, like view layer combined, right? And so this is just the render from Blender, right? So I do a lot of this kind of thing where you bring in the EXR and then you can, um, you can open up the different passes from Blender, like the ambient occlusion, and all kinds of stuff. Like you can go absolutely crazy with this. In fact, there is a um, an add-on. So if I make like a loader and I grab, let's see. If I grab this EXR with the loader, I can do a really fancy thing here. Uh, if you have Reactor installed, which is kind of a plugin manager for uh, Fusion, you can go to script, split EXR ultra, and that will split out all of your different render passes into these different input, um, input nodes. And you can use each of these for various mats and everything. And it's pretty, pretty crazy. So you can just, just use the diffuse color of things. You can just use the shadows. And I mean, it just gets, it gets pretty wild. Um, you can extract mats from things. This is a depth pass, shows how far away things are from the camera. Um, very, very useful stuff from 3D renders. And yeah, you can combine them all in Fusion. That's like Fusion's jam is doing stuff like that. So very, very cool. How do you get sound sources into iPads, say from Epidemic Art List? Uh, you'd have to download them and then put them on your external drive, or you could download them directly to your iPad, and then you'd have to import them. Yanko says, are you planning to refresh your YouTube editor's master training? Um, not officially, not the exact training. Um, we'll probably leave that as it is. We're going, we have quite a few training uh, titles right now. And the, the workflow training is like kind of the, it's kind of the child of the YouTube editor's master training. So the workflow training would probably be like the, the, the big brother of it, right? It's the one that's going to be updated and have a lot of the similar information there. Um, it's not just focused on YouTube. It's mostly just focused on making content on a regular basis really quickly. So if you like YouTube Masters Editor, Editor's training and you want to upgrade, workflow training is good. I would recommend that. But we're probably not going to make another YouTube Editor's Master training, uh, as far as I know, for a while. Okay. Hope that answers your question. Okay. How do you access sound effects? I downloaded, but nothing appears on sound page. You mean you downloaded like the effects library kind of thing in the, like the Fairlight sound library thing here. Um, I'm, I don't know if they're going to appear here. I think you might have to search. No, they, no, they would appear there. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure why that isn't showing there. I think it should show there. Strange. Do you use any outside sources? Uh, 
and Vado Emotion Array? If so, which ones do you recommend the most as far as being user-friendly? I really like Artlist, honestly. They've sponsored a lot of videos and stuff, so I mean, take it for what you want. Um, I've used a lot of Artlist and um, ArtGrid stuff. I think their stuff's really great. Um, I use their stuff all the time. Uh, use a lot of Envato, but um, kind of depends on what we're what we're looking for. I usually, you know, have like two or three sources for things. Do you recommend people use the Reactor plugin? Yeah, Reactor's pretty cool. Yeah, I would I would recommend Reactor if you're into Fusion for sure. There's no reason not to really. It doesn't it hasn't messed anything up or anything. That's the thing I'm always con like worried about is that it's gonna mess something up, mess up some setting, but. Um, it hasn't yet. It seems like it works great. Are there some stock videos which you would recommend practice to practice coloring? Um, there aren't any that like are easily available. I mean, you'd have to have a account at like a stock footage site, but um, I'm actually going to be doing some videos with the art list, um, art list footage. This is all art list footage. Uh, because they do have ungraded footage that you can download, which is really nice. So this is shot like on Sony FS7. This is ungraded Blackmagic 6K, ungraded red. It's just in, in the log format. So that's a great thing to practice color grading with. And like I said, I'm going to do some like kind of not follow along videos, but kind of watch me grade um, a project videos uh, here in the near future from, uh, from Artlist actually. So pretty cool. Is there a good way to remove wind from the background? I'm trying to edit my first video of my vacation hikes, but the wind is killing me. Okay, um, there are ways to do that with EQ. Um, there are plugins you can get. The coolest one that I've seen so far, honestly, is the um, is the built-in, um, the new audio stuff, uh, voice isolation, which is only in the paid version. That's another good reason to use the, the paid version of Resolve. You take this on and it does a pretty good job, man, of getting rid of anything except for a voice. It does it with AI. It's quite cool, quite good. So I'd recommend that. Um, that's the easiest way, I would say. See how that goes. But again, you have to have paid version. Yep. Ari has some good raw footage. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Is there a way to remove hard-coded subtitles from a video? Um, no. If they're baked into the video, I mean, you could crop them out maybe, but I mean, there's not like a fancy replace them thing. Yeah. Um, Amon says, I use Premiere to edit and trying to use Resolve Color. I export to XML file to import my project to Resolve and I do basic coloring in Resolve. The color looks good in Resolve, but after I render the video and import it into Premiere, the color is not the same as it looks in the Resolve monitor. Is there any problem with my PC or is there a proper way to do it? Um, unfortunately, moving back and forth between those two things, you'll run into stuff like that. Um, in the deliver page for the color, it's gonna depend on your format so one thing is, you know, if you were to, I would recommend QuickTime DNxHR. Um, one thing that you'll find is if you're getting a color shift, play with this data levels thing between video and full. And because one of them might give you a better version than the other one. Also tagging your color space would be a good idea, which probably is gonna be Rec 709 if they're colored. Um, if it's on Apple, you might do Rec 709A. I would do some tests and see if you can get it to look right. But it, that's probably the problem is right here. Probably. It could also be the way that Premiere is importing things, which I'm not familiar enough with anymore because I never do that. I always edit in Resolve and then color in Resolve, you know, and it's, it's really nice because it doesn't do any of that junk. Know what I'm saying? Can you transfer projects from Premiere to DaVinci? Yeah, there's ways to do it. Yep. Although again, I used to do that and I sure am a lot happier not doing that nowadays. Any tutorial about expression and fusion for transitions and titles? Um, do we have some? Uh, I do have a tutorial on making a countdown clock which deals with some expressions. Um, 
without having like a specific thing that we're trying to do, it'd be hard to show that live too. Okay. El Mary says, uh, how to do a good job with cheap and even slightly uneven and pretty dark green screen. I, let's see, do we have that video out yet? I'm putting out a video on that very, very soon. I think it's like going to come out next week. Um, we also just added a bunch of lessons on that to our advanced fusion course. So El Mary, if you're looking for that, that's great. Long story short, long story short, we have, um, we have some sucky green screen examples here. So we have like this kind of thing. Um, long story short, when you do a key on this, it's not going to work really well just because uh, of all the different um, levels of brightness and everything. And so you'll have to do a key for this side and you'll have to combine it with a key from the other side and you'll have to combine it with a key with another thing and you'll have to put all those keys together using mat controls and make a nice mat and then use that as your key. Yes, yes. So guys, I'm taking questions from the, uh, that are submitted through the form and there are a lot of them. So I might not get to your question guys, but I hope that, I hope that I can. Um, there's a link to a form down below in the, um, in the description. Yeah. Matt controls need their, uh, their own tutorial. Dude, Matt controls are seriously such freaking power in fusion. Like. If you just know Mac controls, you can do so much stuff. Oh, so good. So good. Um, but yeah, I should, I'm, I'm going to be making some videos on that. We do have a whole section again uh, of stuff on Mac controls in our advanced fusion course, just because it's so important, right? Uh, Phoenix or Phoenix, I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, when learning to edit, what is a good milestone for an editor to know they're ready to start charging for their work? Oh, baby, what a good question. What a good question. How do you know when you're ready to start charging for your work? I don't know if you're ever going to know. Um, I think when you, when you decide that you want to do something uh, in your editor and it's not a total struggle to do it, like you feel like you understand how to do and, and could pretty much within a reasonable amount of time, do what you want to do. I would say it's probably good to start doing that. But but honestly, you should have some, if you're gonna start charging for your work, you should have some kind of practice first. Um, do some free videos for some friends. Do a spec commercial for something and like take it from the whole way through, not just, oh, I've edited a couple um, little things for myself, but like from planning and pre-production, all the way through, uh, you know, if you're going to be the one shooting it through production, through editing it and color and sound and rendering it out, putting it on YouTube or putting it on TV or whatever it is and looking at it and going, that is good. Showing it to other people and saying, is this good? And have them be honest with you and give you feedback. If you do that a few times, um, you're going to be in a lot better space than like, yeah, I basically know how to edit and I've edited some sample footage online and now I'm ready to start charging. Like you probably shouldn't do that. Right. Yeah. Do it scared, but be smart about it. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Do it scared. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be a little unconfident, but I think having that whole workflow under your belt is a good idea. There's nothing and it's free to do that. Right go and shoot a little video with your phone. Like you don't even have to have a fancy camera and you can do your editing on that. Take it all the way through, even if the video sucks, because you're going to learn a lot just going from beginning to end. Um, then you, then a lot more that way than you would just um, kind of spending time on theoretical stuff, right? Could you go over some basics for fusion and visual effects? I got a short film assignment and would love to incorporate some visual effects. So some basics on it would be great. Okay. Um, I don't know how to say your name. Is it Ik Ikjot? Uh, can you post in chat and tell me what specifically you're looking for? I mean, are you looking for like somebody's head exploding? Are you looking for um, gunshots? Are you looking to clone somebody out? 
uh, we might be able to talk about something like that. Um, might be able to do that. Kind of depends on how crazy you need to get. Is there a way to export a multi-track audio in H.264? I have some clips I want to trim in time and audio tracks not being used. There, uh, let me think if there's a way to do that. If there is a way, it's gonna be here. Yeah. So here in the um, deliver page, so I have QuickTime H.264, right? Under audio, you can add multiple tracks here and you can select whichever timeline track you want. Oh man, you can't see this. <laughs> okay, anyway, rack work up, yep. So yeah, here uh, in the <laughs> here in the deliver page, if you go to video H.264 auto, um, or yeah, codec H.264, if you go to the audio right here, here you can, um, you can add output tracks and you can pick timeline track you can pick different buses, whatever you want to do. And that's how you would do that. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. I haven't done that for a while. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Okay. Notorious B says, is there a way to, oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Evan with an exclamation point. This may be an obvious question, but I've been hearing a lot that there's a separate program for Fusion that's separate from Resolve that resolves <laughs> Fusion. <laughs> and that Resolve's Fusion is a light version. Is that true? I wouldn't call it a light version. Um, you would think it would be, but it, it it's not really. It can do, I mean, 95, 99% of what Fusion can do. I, I wouldn't worry about it. I, I really wouldn't. You can do some major, major stuff in the in the Resolve version of Fusion. And there's just not a whole lot. Like I've looked at this really hard because I've been getting super into VFX and I just cannot find a reason to to open the the um, the standalone version. If somebody knows one, feel free to let me know, but I, I can't, I can't justify it. Guys, any questions that you have, please put them in the, uh, in the form that's in the first line of the description, please. Uh, Jason says, after hundreds of YouTube videos, I'm still struggling with the disconnect between camera metadata, OS metadata, tags, exposure, and making those useful within Resolve. Till now I've resorted to naming files with EXIF tools to have the exposure date, time, and uh, project name. But so often I want to find a tag from a file and they're not there. Yeah, frustrating. Yeah, I don't have a great version of that myself. Um, I've heard that there are some good utilities for that that work with Resolve. Um, we were talking about it actually on the um, ResolveCon uh, Discord a little bit, but um, I don't remember. I don't remember what it is. 15 Resolve can be updated. Yeah, you can update from 15 to 18, no problem. Um, John Luis says, I have to render about 50 Blackmagic RAW files into MP4. Is there a simple way to do that? I know I have to edit them all and then give them a unique name. Now I do it one at a time. Uh, yeah, you can do that. So one way to do that is if you have a, let's just pick this shot here. So if you have all of your footage, so what I would do is just put the footage end to end in a timeline like this, and then go to the deliver page and then go to video and select, select render individual clips and go to file. You can do custom name, source name. You can add uh, like a unique suffix or something. There's all kinds of ways to do that. Um, and so like I used to make proxies this way. That's a great way to do it. And you can uh, like batch render all those files together. Uh, that's a great way to do it. You could also probably do it with the proxy generator. There's ways to do that. What are some of your most used or favorite plugins? My favorite plugin, probably the one that I use the most is um, Reduce Noise by Neat Video. It is a fantastic noise reduction plugin. I don't even know how they do it so well. It's so good. Let's see if I can find a noisy clip even here. Sure, let's use this one because it's gonna have a little bit of noise. So here in Fusion, let's put a 
Let's put some kind of load on this. I don't even know what what this is, but this will give us a little bit more, more definition here. And so if we zoom in here, I don't know if you guys can see this, but maybe, maybe in the blue or red channels or something, you can see there's a lot of noise, right? Okay. And check this out. This is, this is how this plugin works. So reduce, reduce noise. You prepare noise profile. It opens up this window. You select a part that's noisy, hit build profile, hit apply, and it cleans up that noise like crazy. Like I'm playing this back. There's no, there's like almost no noise now, which is nuts. So it cleans up all the noise. And the great thing is it stays sharp. Like this is, this is before and after on that noise reduction plugin. Like it doesn't, it doesn't mess with the image that bad, but it gets rid of the noise. Like here's it with the noise and here's without. Dude, it's like so good and it renders fast. It says all the things that it should do. Cannot say enough about that plugin. It's great. So that's one. But from one creator to another, your videos have helped me immensely. They've been a lifesaver in so many situations. DaVinci Resolve is the way. Thank you. Hey, Joshua, thank you. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, man. Maybe we should have some coffee sometime. Let's connect. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Send me an email. Where to get that plugin? Uh, just Google it. It's called Neat Video. Neat Video Reduce Noise. Neat Video. All right. How do you use video transition effects when you have multiple tracks, say a text in a video and you want to transition just to a single video track? Yeah. Um, so if you have multiple tracks like this, let's say we have this one here and we want to transition to just the single one, you can put a transition here. So I can just like use a cross dissolve, right? So you can put a cross dissolve or any transition. They all work the same just on one clip like that. And that would work. Um, it depends on if they have transparency or whatever beneath them because you're always going to see the one that's below it that way. So if you have it like this, then it's better to probably just like roll this other one back and roll the other one under it like that. See, it's still like... <laughs> it's still cached to be like weird here. So that might, that might help. <laughs> Has to rethink about things. Oh, wow. That's a fun little bug, isn't it? It just keeps going. Pretty cool. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, but that's the basic idea. Yeah, you could also put them in a compound clip. Like if you have multiple things and you want to treat them as one clip, I would put them in a compound clip and then do a, do a transition there. Hope that's helpful. How do you make fusion components that can be reused in different projects? Also, can certain fields be changed from project to project? Yeah. So, um, I do have a I do have a video on that on making fusion templates. If you want to Google that, basically what you do is you make your fusion composition, and you um, take everything in fusion except for the media out. Okay. So this is like not even going to work. But let's say you had, let's say you had text or whatever over your black background, which I don't have one right now, but you'd select all of these, right click and go to um, duh, 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 duh. settings. Oh boy, what is it? Yeah, macro create macro, that's what it is. Macro create macro. And then you can basically tick the box of whatever you want to edit in the edit page. And so like styled text, font, size, color, right? These things, you can rename them, right? And these are what you'll be able to edit later. Then you export that out and there's a way to export it and re-import it and stuff, but it'll end up being, um, so like here's, so here's one for like a keyboard shortcuts in my videos, right? So you can select this and then you can edit stuff here in the edit page, right? 
So that's kind of how you do that. And yeah, they can be animated and all that stuff. Hope that's helpful. Okay. Anthony, not sure if this has already been asked, but do you still edit drone footage? Either yours or someone else's? Do you still edit drone footage? Um, I mean, I guess I never had like a business of editing drone footage, no. Um, I mean, I've color graded drone footage. We did have a long time ago, we had a training on like how to edit a drone footage kind of movie. Sorry, sorry, I don't know if I'm totally familiar clear on that um alan says hello i've been working on a big edit and realized that the frames were capped on 24 is there a possible way to make it swap to 60 without having to edit everything back again do you mean that your timeline is 24 frames if so what you can do is you can make a new timeline and you can use uncheck use project settings, go to your format and change your timeline frame rate to 60 or whatever, hit create. And then you can go to your original timeline like this, select everything. Ooh, did I get an error just now? Okay, select everything, go to your timeline and then paste it back in. And that will work and it will put that in into the timeline And it, it should work. It should work great to do that. Um, that's different if you shot in 24 and you meant to shoot in 60. You could slow down your footage and stuff, but it's not quite going to be the same. So I hope that's helpful. Omar says, uh, hi, Casey. Is there any way to move an object, text, image, video in the frame without having to use the inspector like just grab it and move it? Yeah. So if you have an image like this and you want to move it around, right, you select it. And then up here in the lower left corner of the viewer, you can click on this little square until it's white, and then you can grab it and move it around, right? And that's just, it's doing the same thing as moving position, zoom, rotation, that kind of stuff here in the transform, doing the same thing. Jonathan, is there a better EQ plugin for DR other than the built-in? Also, if there's a free version, um, I'm not super, nerdy on EQ plugins, but my understanding is the EQ for Resolve is pretty, pretty sweet. So I don't know. Brandon says, can Resolve transcribe Japanese, Korean, or Chinese XML subs off of IMF? I have no idea. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, Eric Strand says, suggestion for collab videos among your Resolve Con crew, pick an effect and then have each person do it completely different ways. All fusion, all edit page. Ooh, that's a great idea, Eric. Thank you. Can you edit 4K with a 1080 timeline and then render in 4K my computer is slow? Yes. You just put the 4K footage into a 1080 timeline and then you go over to deliver and you can either, yeah, I mean, what I would do is edit just in the 1080 timeline and then you can go to your timeline settings like this, timelines, timeline settings, and just switch the resolution back up. And you might have to like reframe some stuff or figure something out if, if it's a different um, aspect ratio but you should just be able to do that and then export it. Um, I'm not sure how much of a performance improvement you'll see. I would assume there's a, a little one at least, but I don't know. Okay. All right, guys, I'm answering questions from, a, uh, from our form. It's linked down below in the description. There are a lot of questions, so I'm trying to get through as many as I can. We'll see how it goes here. Uh, any video about creating titles transitions not depending on resolution and frame rate? Yeah, they don't by by um, by default care about that. So any kind of title transition thing should be reasonable as far as I know. Do you give one-on-one -on -one lessons over video chat? If so, how to contact? We, I don't right now. Um, we are developing a kind of a group coaching program for fusion which i'm going to let you know here in the next couple of weeks what we're going to do with that it's still being developed but long story short it's going to be a a few people will be able to do a like a group session with me for a couple days uh and then we're going to take clips from that and kind of share it 
um, with everybody, but it's going to be a very small kind of more intimate thing, um, teaching people how to use fusion. So very excited about that more to come on that, but, um, no, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching right now. I rendered a video and when I played it back, there was no audio. How to correct this. Hmm. Hmm. There could be possibly in the, um, it's possible here that you don't have this audio thing checked. It's also possible that you have your um, bus not set right. Like it's set to monitor, but not set to output or something like that. I don't know. Um, I do a lot of discord, Joshua. So if, um, but if you want to email me first, that would be great. And then we can do discord. That's probably easiest. Um, my email should be in like the about tab here in, uh, in YouTube's how to animate text in tracking text. Ooh. Um, by the way, is, is Ikshot here? Did we? Did you ever get back to me on the basics of fusion, visual effects, that kind of thing? If you said something earlier and I missed it, go ahead and repost it. That'd be great. How to animate text and tracking text. Tracking text. You mean like how to track text to something and then animate it going in? I'm not sure exactly what that means. Any free rotoscoping tools similar to Magic Mask or do you need to pay for that stuff? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't looked into like third-party tools for that, but Magic Mask is downright amazing. Downright amazing. Highly recommend. I don't understand how good, how it can be so good. It's, it's 100% lives up to the hype. <laughs> Okie dokie. I'm new to Resolve. Is there any way to add a transition to many images at the same time in the timeline? Uh, yeah, so a way to do this is you can go into like trim mode and you can select the uh, the edit points in between these clips. And you could do something like Control T and add a transition to all of that. That'll add the default transition in between them, which is pretty nice. You can also, if you make a transition like um, this hexagon iris, obviously. Ooh, my system's being a jerk right now. There we go. Such so like triangle iris. Okay. Oops. Bloop. Okay. So it does this. Um, you can copy this, like select it and hit copy, and then grab something like these and then hit control V and paste that transition so that you have this triangle transition in between each one of these. So you could do that. That's a good way to do it. All right. James says, uh, Hey Casey, I was editing some 4k footage the other day. My PC isn't the best. So I have to use proxies. Thanks to your tutorial on them. I left my PC for about 15 minutes while DaVinci was still open, came back and the playback was really bad. Almost like the proxies vanished, looked in the windows folder and they were still there. So I regenerated proxies in resolve, which obviously took some time. And the problem seems seemed to be sorted. Is this a known glitch or a standard bad luck? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it just didn't, maybe it just took a second to, to load them or something. I, I haven't ran into that. The only thing I'd say is make sure that your proxy settings are right because if your proxies are like uncompressed, <laughs> like it's not gonna work, you know? All right. You guys, thank you so much for all of your questions and everything. We'll have a few more minutes here. Are you guys feeling good? Is this helpful? Is this, this good? Again, um, if you do have questions, you can post them in the, uh, in the form down below. I don't know if I'm gonna have time for any more. I might be able to finish the questions we have. Maybe, maybe, <clears throat> we'll see. <clears throat> All right, uh, Garrett says, I'm running into issues with lagging playback on the edit page. Is it hardware 
issue, more RAM, better graphics card, or is there some setting I'm missing to improve playback rate? Thanks, love you. Aw, love you too. Um, it could be, it depends on what your, what your system specs are and what kind of frame rate and what kind of uh, video format you're using. Yeah, um, you know, if you have an older PC with a not very great graphics card and you're trying to edit 8K raw footage, you're gonna have a hard time, right? Um, but if it's like 1080 footage from a DSLR and you have a new MacBook, like, yeah, that should work fine. You know what I mean? It, it kind of depends. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do uh, proxies, which I have a video on. If you just search on my channel for proxies, um, if anyone's not familiar with proxies, it's just a way to switch out your high res media with low res media. That's easy to edit and work with. Um, it's like placeholders and then it will automatically switch it out when you're done editing. And it's very nice, very nice. We make proxies for most things just because it's just so much nicer to edit with really easy little videos than with big videos, even though we have pretty good systems that can handle it most of the time, the little bit of performance gain that you get over you know a couple weeks working on a project is worth taking an hour or half an hour or 15 minutes or however long it is to transcode stuff yeah definitely check that out garrett thanks mike says just got resolved free good job did a sample video with gopro and iphone vids in 4k and it took four hours to render a five minute video with only transition speed between shots and a couple picture in picture vid vids i am sure i have a wrong setting well, it depends on what kind of uh, system you have. Again, if you don't have a great graphics card and if those are in 4K and if they're high frame rate, that could totally be a thing. Yeah, that could totally be a thing. On Resolve Landing, I constantly see Untitled Project, can't seem to remove it or rename it. Oh, yeah. Reinstalling also doesn't work. Um, it's they, it's like the default project that just shows up. I wouldn't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Jim says, should I shoot everything from my drone in D-Log? Should I shoot in a higher frame rate than the project frame rate to make it smoother? Thanks. Um, if you can, yeah, I would shoot it in a higher frame rate. It's nice. It's nice to do that um, generally for drone stuff. D-Log, uh, it kind of depends on... Um, I like D-Log. Uh, I think D-Log M is really nice. Uh, if you have that, like with from like a Mavic 2, those are nice. But it, I would do some tests is my short answer. I would do some tests and see which one you like better because some people don't like the look of D-Log and they don't like how it treats the shadows and stuff. So any advice on finding the perfect balance between vocal and audio levels? Um, Generally, you want your music to be much quieter than you think it needs to be, generally. The other thing that you can do is uh, scoop out like the 1K-ish range with an EQ in your music track, and that will help kind of clarify your, your um, talking over your music. That's kind of what I know. There are probably other fancy ways to do it, which we could ask Sam about sometime. He knows stuff. <laughs> I'm a little bit, I've done audio for a long time, but I, I've never gotten real deep into it. So all the audio questions I'm pretty surface level on <laughs> just because I don't, I don't generally need to go super crazy with audio. Um, we do have a couple people here on staff that really enjoy audio. So I let them do that. <laughs> so Steven Seagal, thank you so much for all of your movies. Um, when I start a project, I must set the screen dimensions by hand. Can this be automated? I can, can you visually change the dimensions like a visual crop? Um, no, I think you have to type them in or you might be able, I think we were talking earlier about like making the defaults a certain way. Um, but you usually have to, you have to set it by hand in some way. Yeah. 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 Guys, make sure to uh, post questions in the uh, in the uh, form down below in the description. 
and that's what I'm trying, like I have a queue, it's a very nice queue that isn't mixed in with all the other random um, comments, so I'm just working through these down. We This will be our hundredth question, this, this, uh, this stream. In DaVinci Studio, I've created some really cool tools. Is there a way to use the functionality of the edit and deliver page? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can copy. I'm pretty sure you can just like select your nodes in Fusion, like in the Fusion standalone, like literally select them and hit Control C, open up Fusion in Resolve and hit Control V. And it, as far as I know, it pretty much just pastes it in and it works. But I haven't done that a whole lot myself, but I'm pretty sure that's the thing. How do I make only one letter in the word flickering? Ooh, that's a good good I good thing. Um there's probably ways to animate this within like a text plus, but honestly what I would do if you're just gonna do like some word, all right? What I would do is I would just make a mask around one of the letters like this. And then I can take that level. Oops, 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 oops. Um, basically, you can like do it like this. You can put a mask on around the W and then have it. Let's see. How would we do that? Oh, yeah. Here's how you do it. And then you can kind of change the blend of a merge like this. And you can kind of do something like that. That's a way to do it. So basically all I'm doing is isolating one of those um, letters and then just merging that separately than our, the rest of the word. And so we have W and then ORD and then this merge, which controls the W, I'm just blending up and down. So that's a way to do it. Ralphie says, can you explain how to animate flying curve and make them look real and not keyframed? A flying curve, how to animate a flying curve. I'm not sure I know what that means. Yeah, Ralphie, if you wanna, Rafi, sorry, if you want to uh, clarify in the chat here, that that might help me. David, I'm glad you enjoyed the new version of Resolve. That's awesome. Um, okay, Cody says, how would you go about making documentary style side? Okay, documentary style scrolling timeline lower third. Scrolling timeline lower third. Are you talking about like the news ticker thing? Is that what you mean, Cody? Hmm. Where do you get your music, by the way? The music back uh, on this stream right here is uh, just chill hop beats. It's like, um, I actually don't know if it's chill. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's chill hop. It's just like royalty free music for streamers on Spotify. Jane, let's see. James Whitaker says, what are the best settings for rendering clips with effects on the timeline? And will doing this reduce the quality of those specific clips in the final export because they're going through two rendering processes? Uh, yeah, so you, c I always pre-render stuff, especially if it's hard to play back. I mean, if it's something really simple, like something like this, like where you're putting just a word over something, probably not. But if it's like some major compositing, I always render it. Um, Long story short, um, what I would do is like put it in a separate timeline and then render out the timeline with something like DNxHR. So something like, uh, yeah, QuickTime, DNxHR, 444-12-bit. That's going to just be such good quality that you're never going to have a problem uh, with it recompressing it. I mean, it is technically less quality, but you never notice it. You never notice it. And if you say you do, you're wrong. You're not, you're, you're kidding yourself. That's all I'm saying. Can you do another fusion beginner video? Why don't you just watch the one that I made again? <laughs> that sounded a lot more 
a, a lot a lot of a lot snottier than I wanted it to be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what what are you else are you looking for in a, a another fusion beginner video? RR says, how do you do color management in Fusion when you do a uncolor management workflow for motion graphics as well? Ooh. Um, have you RR, you should check out my color management in Fusion video. I have one that's pretty recent. Okay. Did Cody get back? I don't think so. Do you use an asset manager for your heritage footage? I need a solution. Um, no, <laughs> not really. That would be a good idea. I would like a good solution for that too. Like you, I use proxies all the time to speed up the workflow. Yeah, yeah, so good. Finding everything I'm looking for browsing through your backlog. That's awesome, Justin, so glad. Dan says, after keyframing or animating a power window curve, on the color page. Okay. I'd like to select all the keyframes and add inside and outside softness, but it doesn't seem to get applied to all the keyframes. Do I have to go back and do it to each of my 100 keyframes individually? Oh, dang. That sucks. Um, Here's something that you might consider. So when you do, when you do a key, when, when you're, cause I, I assume you're meaning like rotoscoping, right? So like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do like rotoscoping somebody, right? This, which this isn't really the way you would do it. You do it in multiple different pieces, right? But if you have this, uh, one thing that you're probably gonna wanna do is track it at some point. And when you're on the tracker, you can switch this to frame mode in the tracker. And then when you adjust things, it will add a keyframe um, to that to that tracker. And then you can kind of keyframe things like that. And that's actually a really nice way to, um, to animate the shape kind of around. Um, if you are actually moving the shape around like this, see does that yeah it, it moves the the shape too as far as i know that just moves the shape and the points and then you can animate it that way and then you can adjust the inside and the off outside softness and it won't oh it does it it does adjust it okay well there goes that idea i thought it didn't boy yeah you probably have to set that you probably have to set that beforehand that kind of sucks huh Yep. Sorry. Okay. Well, we learned something today, didn't we? Isn't that great? Hmm. Can you ex track the 3D camera in Fusion and export it to 3D software? Yes, you probably could, but you probably would do a better job tracking it in the 3D software or using a separate thing. I don't know. There's probably a way to do it. Um, my English isn't that good. Okay. That's a, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Did I did I misunderstand something you said? I, I think you have a different name on, on the form if you filled out the form. Okay, guys, we only, we are so, we have so much more. Oh my goodness. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for all of your uh, questions. This is crazy. This is more questions than I could possibly go through, especially like showing all this stuff. Um, so for a lot of you, I know I didn't get to your question, but we'll do these uh, probably every month. So be saving up. You can also uh, email and um, I might be able to get back to you with that or make a video on it at some point. But um, yeah, let me know. Guys, thank you for hanging with me today. This has been super fun. Thank you to everyone who's bought our courses. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed to our channel. Um, if, you are if you're not subscribed, you should probably do that. You should probably do that. That would be good. It says most people who watch the videos aren't subscribed. That's weird. If you like the videos, just subscribe. Come on. 
<laughs> um, you guys, thank you for hanging with me. I am so, so thankful for all of you. You guys are important. Okay. If nobody's told you today, you are important. All right. You matter. What you want to make and your passions and the things that you enjoy matters. Okay. Please continue to put cool stuff out into the world. All right. And I hope that I can be some little part of helping you do that. And um, yeah, I hope that what we do here at Ground Control can be encouraging for that. All right. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a really great day. And uh, yeah, we're going to be posting some more tutorials. We're going to have some news on the Fusion um, boot camp kind of thing that we're talking about. Uh, we're going to have some news on ResolveCon, I think, pretty soon, but not yet. And uh, yeah, you guys are wonderful. So thank you. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.